Hey everyone. This is probably going to be a quick one. Uh, I decided that uh, it would be more worth it to me to go ahead and share my ChatGPT prompt that I use to generate my uh, stable diffusion prompts. There's really no secret to it. Um, I mean it works great uh, and honestly you're more than welcome to use it. Um, I've been using ChatGPT for a while. I've learned how really kind of how the AI works there and, and, and how to get it to respond certain ways. And so I'm going to walk through my prompt um, and really show you how, how it's set up and the pattern and the instructions I give ChatGPT. And, and, and it only this prompt really only works with the GPT-4 model. Um, I've tried it with a 3.5 and I can never get consistently good results uh, like I do from the version 4. Um, so really to start off with, <clears throat> uh, like most prompts, you, you tell it what you want it to be. You know, in this one I'm telling you it's a master artist. He's well versed in artistic terminology, vast vocabulary for being able to describe visually things that you see. And then I tell it what I'm going to do. I'm going to give it a series of prompts that I want it to analyze um, for a, you know, that uh, were generated or used in a program called Stable Diffusion. So I'm telling it where, what I'm going to be using them in. Uh, I'd, uh, I tell it what I want it to do. I want it to analyze the style of the prompts uh, that I give it. Uh, the sentence structures, how they're laid out, common patterns between them all. Uh, the sample prompts may have special formatting. I tell it about the formatting using the, the uh, emphasis and de-emphasis uh, formatting. And here's the thing with GPT. It works really well when you give it examples. I mean, you can give it instructions like this all day long. And you might get good results, you might not, but what I found is it really locks it in when you actually give it good examples. So in this particular one, I give it an example that has multiple words in it. So it knows it can use multiple words inside the uh, inside these parentheses, and then uh, single words, and different types of words, and different levels of, of, an, of emphasis. Um, and I tell it why it needs that emphasis. Uh, to either emphasize or subdue parts of the description uh, based on what I want, you know, what it thinks should be emphasized or de-emphasized in the image or on the prompt. So uh, you, know, you can see that there. Again, if you want to pause this, grab this, copy this, however you want, I'll try to put it in the description. I don't know if I have enough room for it down there. But <clears throat> um, then I tell it what's going to happen. You're going to be asked to generate prompts based on your analysis. Um, and then I, I re-emphasize uh, a couple of things here. Um, well, I tell a couple more things about the prompts and how Stable Diffusion handles the prompts and how the software pays more attention to what's at the beginning of the prompt and, and, and its attention declines as you get further along to the end of the prompt. Um, so, and, and I kind of give it a basic for like an example of what the prompt format looks like, you know, using these brackets. It, GPT is great at using these to understand that they represent like a just kind of a placeholder with a description of what could go there. So now we get down into further instructions on prompting. I pulled this from a website somewhere, uh, Order Matters, words near the front, and obviously this reemphasizes what I already set up here. That, uh, excuse me, that the words near the front. Uh, hold more weight than the words at the end of the prompt. Um, and I found that I love having the, this at the beginning of my prompts. You don't necessarily need to put this in here, um, but I, I, I love having it there because I get really good results and consistency with my images when I do put this there. So I tell it that I want most prompts should have the following at the beginning. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure exactly why I've got it double bracketed, double parentheses here, uh, but it, what's interesting is it understands and, and formats it properly. I may go back and edit that later. Okay, so when I tell it also um, that if it's going to use artist names in it, because a lot of the examples I give it do have artist names in them, that I always want it to make want to make sure that it has in the style of, uh, either before or after or whatever. Um, instead of just putting the artist's name, it tends to do better. The prompts in Stable Diffusion tend to do better when you put in the style of. And the examples I give it, there's one with one name and then there's another with uh, two names. 
So then we get down into I, I wanted to understand that there are a difference there's a difference between low, medium, and high detail or high quality prompts. And so I give it examples. I tell it first, these are, you know, here's some examples of low, medium, high quality prompts. And I give it an example, low quality prompt. Just portrait of a futuristic, beautiful in and in a futuristic city, deep vivid colors. Very simple prompt, nothing to it, no emphasis, no special formatting, no nothing. The medium uh, prompt adds some more words, a little more sophisticated, uh, describes coloring, uh, maybe emotion, um, that kind of thing. And then the high detail prompt, I actually worked with it to generate a decent uh, prompt of what I would think a high quality uh, prompt would look like. And then moving down, what I do is I give it a bunch of examples of different size, different type of prompts, different quality prompts, uh, from short to long, uh, with all you know, even with camera uh, settings and sizes, uh, just giving it as many examples as I could fit into this prompt before it would tell me that it was too long. And then down at the bottom, um, I re-emphasize just to put it back in its memory a little to uh, what's the word. Uh, refresh its memory that it'll be asked to generate prompts based on the instructions above and um, that it will provide prompts based on the provided information every time a user instructs you and in those prompts I would also like you to include a description of the camera angle used to get the shot so I you know I want it to be creative with the camera angles so um, and then just so it knows I don't really care to hear anything from it right after this I just tell it to uh, uh, just respond with tell me what you want to see so and when I submit that it just comes back and says tell me what you want to see and um, I did modify this prompt just a tiny bit just you know fixing some of the, the formatting but it shouldn't affect how this works so uh, let's say I, I want to see a prompt that's um, of a castle you know let's say uh, futurist let's see futuristic castle uh, on <laughs> on a, an alien planet with a windy, dusty atmosphere. Uh, I can specify things like mood and stuff like that here. Uh, I want it to be uh, uh, scary, dark. Um, and uh, have uh, oh, what's a good what would be a good something good to fit in there? What would you see? Uh, a lot of uh, foreign vegetation. And this is just going to generate one prompt. Um, I can tell it at the beginning, give me five prompts, give me ten prompts, and it'll do the exact same thing. It'll actually generate a list. You can copy and paste in a stable diffusion to the multi-prompt renderer. So, so we're going to hit enter on that. Oh, gosh. Uh, yeah, I don't know what is up with uh, ChatGPT recently. But they, it's like they time out after 30 seconds. So let's try this again. Okay, so come down here. We'll paste that back in. Hit enter. And like I told it, it puts the best quality masterpiece in detail at the beginning. AK, futuristic castle on any planet, windy, dusty atmosphere, dark, scary, foreign vegetation, twisted plants, unearthly flora, gothic architecture. And fills in a couple of uh, influences uh, and, and some other stuff that I didn't tell it. So uh, it kind of uh, took some creative embellishment there. And uh, let's take, see what it does. So we're going to copy that. We're going to go over to our stable diffusion uh, installation here. And we're going to paste that in. We're going to select a couple of negative prompts on uh, my lighting one, my prime negative, and we're going to do uh, fantasy and landscape and cityscapes. We could probably put more, but I, I think that should uh, strengthen the negative prompts quite a bit. Don't need any faces. I would like this to be wide. So we're going to do 1152. And uh, then we're going to do a 16 by 9. We'll emphasize. We'll bring this up a little bit. Give the the AI a little more freedom to kind of play with the image or to to uh, try to get as close to the prompt as possible. 
I think that's it. Uh, we'll do four. We'll do four images at the, at the same time and hit generate. A second to load the model. I, I did a fresh start on on everything, so it's just starting out here. Giving us some interesting things. I'm not so sure about the vegetation, but we'll see what it looks like when it's done here. And you can add more detail, and you can even tell it to make it make give it a lot more detail. But let's pull one of these up. Well, that's not bad. That's interesting. Uh, the vegetation's more bushes than anything, but we did tell it dusty, you know, kind of thing. So it kind of assumes desert possibly, but it is very uh, uh, Giegerish uh, architecture, which is cool. Plants are a little different in this one here. So yeah, you can get some fun results. Here we got uh, you know some trimmed vegetation, definitely some odd architecture. So they're all about the same in the architecture, which is really cool. Um, let's do something else. I, I always, when I come back to reuse this, I don't just create a new line. Um, I reuse this existing line. The reason for that is it keeps it right there at the top near the original prompt, so it's not losing its effectiveness. I noticed that with GPT, the, the more you chat with it or whatever, where you lose the original prompt at the, at the beginning, it tends to lose focus. So what I do is I come up here and let's say um, high quality, um, very detailed, long prompt of a um, a lot of foreign vegetation. I'm going to say for, uh, foreign or let's say alien trees and plants. Get be a little more specific in that. But what I'm going to do here, what I do here is it's telling the AI make this prompt a lot longer. So we're going to hit submit on that. Again, same thing that I tell it to put at the beginning. Let's see how long it makes it here sinister vibe. I love that. See, the AI is so weird. The AI is so maybe a little longer. The AI thinks of words I probably never would have thought of. Hauntingly beautiful. You know, uh, definitely something that, you know, I'm, I, that's the thing with this. You know, I love doing this AI art stuff because I am also learning. I'm learning a lot of terminology and um, uh, even styles and, and uh, mediums that I never even heard of or never would have thought of myself. Yeah, it was a little longer. Let's go ahead and render that one out and see what it looks like. Oh uh, yeah, here we go. Definitely getting some more landscape, some more in, some interesting structures. Um, yeah, I think it's hard for the AI to really get alien looking vegetation because it's not really what it was trained on, you know, but you, it tends to do some interesting things. So we'll see what it looks like here. So this one here, you know, you got the castle structure and you got this uh, looks like a grassy plain. Then you got these trees that look like they are cut off of the plain, so they're like massive mountain sized trees. But then you get this weird mountain up in here. I find it does this with clouds a lot. It's interesting. That one's not bad. That one's pretty cool. I like that one. I think we're going to save that one. Um, it's not bad. Got some people down here or something down here. And that one's okay. It's kind of bland. But anyway, so you get the idea. So, and, and just so you know, like if I wanted five prompts. So we're going to do uh, five. We'll just add the five at the beginning. Um, with a uh, I don't know let's say uh, fantasy feel to the whole image and see as you can see it numbers it and I'll show you how to use how you can take the whole list and just render out the entire list if you're not if you don't know how to do this there's a plug-in or a script that allows you to take a list of prompts like this. It's so fun to just be able to say, hey, give me 10 
prompts of something that looks like this with this, this in it. And you grab, you copy that whole thing, and you drop it into Stable Diffusion, you set up all your settings, hit render, and it, and it renders out however many images on each prompt that you want. So it's definitely giving us some uh, uh, variation in here. And it's nice that it doesn't use the same artists in all of them. It does actually do things different, like HR Giger here. Uh, and that, and then over here, it's using uh, some different ref references. Um, same with uh, this one right here. So we're going to get some definite different uh, images here. So we're going to grab that. We're going to copy that. Oops, going to copy that whole thing there. Come back over here, and we're going to wipe this out. We're going to leave the negative prompts there. But we're going to come down here to scripts, and we're going to go. Uh, where is it? Prompts from file or text box. And what that gives you is this text box right here. You just do you know, control V, paste, right click, paste, whatever. Drops that in there. So you have five prompts in there. We're just going to do one image each um, just to keep things quick here. I got to finish up here pretty quick. But uh, and hit generate on that. So it's going to generate five different images because just one image each. That one's kind of cool. It's hard to tell because we're just doing uh, the nearest representation of the image, so it's still blurry even when it actually finishes. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Definitely seeing a different artist style there. That was cool. And the last one. Very cool images. I mean, like I said, uh, the AI can use words and terminology that I would never have thought of. Uh, that one's that one's pretty cool. I love this archway that has like these weird uh, emerald or you know uh, jewel looking things. It looked like it tried to do a planet up here. It's a little weird. It's be something you'd end up re-rendering. Uh, that's interesting with this this futuristic castle looking thing over here. These three things. Almost like it blended the vegetation into something that was more architectural. This one was the interesting one. That one I'm going to keep. That's got some style to it. I love that. It's so bizarre. I love that. <laughs> and then uh, come over here. We got this one right here. Kind of interesting. Got some lighting over here. A little too dark. And then now and there looks like the ones we were originally developing. So anyway. So yeah, I'll try to get this uh, in the description down below. You know the uh, the main part of the prompt, and I'll let you guys fill in um, the uh, sample prompts from. I'm sure you've got tons of them, and uh, uh, I'll let you fill that in. And, and hopefully, you have as much luck as I've had with it. It's, uh, it turns out to be a very very useful tool. I don't have to think about the prompts so much anymore. Uh, even the ones it gives me, I can modify them however I want. Like if I see that there's something that needs to be added in, it's great. I can just quickly edit it and, and put it in. But it, this takes a lot of the burden of coming up with the prompts off your shoulders. So uh, anyway, yeah, I'll uh, think of some other things to post about, and, and I'll talk to you guys later.